Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. Today, we are looking at uh, getting organized using the platform. So uh, looking at tasks, notes, and the dashboard, dashboard functionality within your Access Planet platform. So today's agenda, we will be covering uh, defining default tasks for a course. We'll be looking at generating tasks based on specific criteria, capturing important insights with notes, and organizing your data with your dashboards. For those of you that don't know, my name is Jack, and I am one of the customer success managers here at Access Planet, and I've been here now just coming up to three years. Um, so some of you may know me, but if not, that's who I am. So today we're going to start with tasks. Um, and tasks is all about creating and establishing clear actions that are going to keep you and your teams organized and focused on what you're doing. So it's going to help you define responsibilities and prioritize the actions that are most important. And it's going to make a huge difference to productivity within your teams. It can be from uh, whether who's clarifying who's accountable for a certain task or being able to see what has and hasn't been completed, as well as what's still outstanding. The task management tool is free within your Access Planet platform, and it just empowers you to have better control over the course management workload that you've got. So let's dive in. We'll have a look at how uh, tasks can help you stay organized uh, and make that pre and post course administration run that a little bit smoother. So tasks, uh, we're gonna look first at de defining tasks uh, for a course. So these are gonna be for tasks that are required every single time you run a course. And then these will be auto-generated when you schedule a course. So something to remember with this is that this these tasks that we're gonna look at initially are ones that you need to do every single time that course is gonna run. So when you schedule a course, the tasks assigned to that course template, they're automatically gonna be inherited by that course date. Uh, for best practice, something on this is uh, to not create activities that don't need a reminder. If you do that, you're going to have a really overwhelming task list. It's going to be really hard to maintain and isn't going to be used. So you're going to take away some of that important functionality that we want to that we want to use, basically. So let's have a look how that's going to uh, how that will work in our platform. So first of all, we're going to navigate to our course templates data grid, and we're just going to find and edit an existing course template. So here we we'll use the example of gardening level one. We're going to go straight to our tasks from the menu, and then we're going to click add a new task. So you can see here, this window is called task templates. So we're not actually creating the task at the minute. We're defining what the task will be when the course has been generated. So we give the task a subject. So here we're going to use organized gardening equipment, select the admins that are going to be completed to, uh, to who are going to be assigned to that task. Define when the task should be, uh, when it should start. So basically this one's going to be a day before the course start date. We're going to define when the task is due relative to the date of the course. So this one will be uh, one day before the course start date. Choose uh, the, sort of the task type. So in this case, we've used activity. You can also customize these options using the custom list items. So they can be very specific to your platform. Set the priority as number three. We're going to set the default status as not started. And we're going to apply a description. So when we save and close that, then when we go to our class courses data grid, you can see here now we are creating a new, uh, a new task. When we create that new course, sorry, you can see here that the uh, when we open that course date that we've just created, you can see here that our task has been created automatically. It's uh, that organizing garden equipment uh, task, and you can see it's been assigned to Pip and Zachary. So you can see it's automatically been assigned, it's automatically been created um, with the relevant start and due dates relative to the course date. So it's all about that course date after we've created that date. Perfect. So now we're going to generate, look at generating um, tasks based on a specific criteria. So the other type of automated tasks that we have within the platform are via workflows. So most people uh, use workflows for emails, but you can also create tasks off the back of them. And we've actually got a poll, which I've just launched. Um, if you wouldn't mind answering that, it's have you ever used um, tasks from, from the workflow engine? As I say, most people use it mainly for, um, for emails, send out those automatic emails, but also it can be really helpful for tasks too. Um, so with the task workflow, you're going to define the rules for the task being created. And then when the rules are met, the task is then generated. So very similar um, in how you would create the workflow for an email. But instead of uh, for the action, having send email, we just have it as create a task instead. Um, so let's have a look at how that works. So we've got a custom field on the courses called room layout. And this custom field not only defines how the room will be laid out, but it's also gonna, uh, but it's also how the delegates are expected to work and learn. So we need additional resources for some of these layouts. So what we're gonna do is automatically generate a task 
when a room layout is set to make sure these additional resources are always ready for the course. So you can see here we're using the class course module. And then we go into the settings. So you can see here the rules are the same. So we've got course status, what course status we do, what do we want this to be in? And then we've got the room layout, which is going to be in group pod. We're then going to create our new workflow action. So here you can see we have organized room material. And then from the action name, this is where you can choose. Normally, most people choose send email, but here we're going to choose create task. So now we've created that task. Uh, this is these are the settings now to in effect what are we when it when it creates a task what's it going to do so the workflow action date is going to be the function so it's going to be two minutes after the current date time so this is when the task will be created not when it's due the account so who, what account is that linked to that's going to be the training department the creator so in this case we've picked tom smith what's it going to be mapped to so the trigger object in this case so the task is going to be mapped to the course that triggered the workflow option the priority we're going to set for the task which will be three the progress will be zero because it won't have been started. The status when this task is created will be not started. We're going to put the subject in there, which will be organized group pod room materials. What sort of type is it? And in this case, it'll be activity. And then the start date. So when's this start? when is the start date of this uh, task going to need to start in? This is going to be one day before the start date. So that'll be one day before the start date of the course. The due date, which we're going to put um, as a field. And in this case, it's going to be used the course start date. So we'll change it there from uh, fields. We've then got these set options already, so we can choose the start date. That's automatically going to pull through the start date of the course. We're then going to go through into the details. So we're going to put in here what we need. So in this case, we've got five smaller flip charts, the markers and the stationery. So that's the task that we need. That's going to be the details of the task. Who the task is going to be assigned to. So we've got Penelope in this case. Uh, and then that's when we press save. So if we look over the settings here, we've got the function. So uh, sorry, the workflow action date. So that's going to be the function on this one. That's two minutes after the current date time. So that's, again, just a reminder, that is when the task is going to be created, not when it's going to be due. We've got the account. In this case, will be the training department. The person that's created it, so that's Tom Smith. Map to is going to be the trigger object. So that's going to be the course in this situation, the priority, the progress, and the status, and then the subject. And we're going to fill in the start date and the due date of the course. Then we set the workflow to active, and we're going to create a new course with the group pod room layout. So when we've created that, we have now created that course, perfect. We're gonna go along to the tasks. We can see that task has been created there. And if you go to workflow instances, we can see here the instance has been created. So that's our task that we've just set up in that workflow. And it's that, so that is ready to go. We right click in to um, wait for the two minutes to pass. So when we've executed that, it's gonna speed it up and trigger that a bit early. You can now see that that organized group pod room materials, that's already been created. Um, and there it is, that's our task created. So that's off the back of a workflow. So instead of it being the first example was off a course template, this is off the back of a workflow. So it's just using the workflow engine. Instead of just using it for emails, we're using it for something different, in this case, tasks. So to summarize, we've generated a task based on a course being created with a certain criteria. And now the final thing on task before we move on to the next section is um, being able to generate tasks for multiple items. So if you've got multiple items in your platform that all need an activity completing, um, it could be the multiple courses all need a new trainer after a trainer has been signed off sick. It could be that multiple products need uh, of stock need ordering, or it could be that multiple invoices need chasing. You can now select all of them from the relevant data grid and use the bulk add the uh, bulk add tasks option to quickly add this task to each item. So it's a massive massive time saver. You can see um, we can also do the same thing with notes, and that's going to bring us on to the next topic. Um, it's really easy to use. You go to one of your data grids, highlight all the items that you want to add that task to in bulk. You click the um, next to the check box in the header row, click that little arrow, and you can see we've got add tasks and the add notes. And that's going to add that to every single course or every single item that you've uh, selected in that data grid. So as I mentioned, that brings us on to the next topic, which is notes. So that we're looking at capturing those important insights with notes. Um, it's all about keeping track of that important information and adding notes is a great way to stay organized and ensure that nothing's just going to slip through. This can be recording key insights from a course, tracking the needs of a delegate or logging specific requests for a course. Notes are going to give you that central place for the details that matter. It's an inaccessible place for your whole team to be able to view and keeping it all uh, organized and accessible. It's a way of trying to remember everything, ensuring that your team, your team also don't need to keep badgering each other for, for updates. 
So notes can be used to provide more information, document changes, record points and ideas, and aid memory about almost anything. Notes are a quick way um, of capturing information, making it accessible to all trained admins within the platform that they're already logging into every single day. It makes notes a really powerful way of centralizing your operations, staying on top of things, and helping them just make better decisions. Uh, within your Access Planet platform, you can add notes against so many different areas. Um, some of the most popular ones are users and accounts, courses and delegates, resources, and against bookings. That's just a highlight. There are so many more that it can uh, that it can be captured on. They're just some of the most popular ways that people use the notes functionality already within the platform. So the first example that we're gonna look at is recording additional information about your customers. So notes are perfect for this. There's only three bits of information to supply and only one is mandatory. And once logged, that information is available for all of your team for reference. So we'll have a look at how this works. So first of all, we are gonna to navigate to our accounts data grid. And then we're gonna find the account that we wanna work on and right click. We're gonna go down to the notes section and we're gonna click the add button next to it. See straight away when we click the add note, it's already mapped to that account. So we don't have to choose that. Subject, this is um, excellent feedback. Again, uh, following an in-house course, that's gonna be our subject to the note. The type is a quick note. And then the note, this is where we're gonna go into a bit more detail um, where we're gonna say Cheryl followed, uh, Cheryl's feedback following their recent in-house course and they've been amazing to deal with. So that's where you can go into more detail after your subject. You click save and close. Um, and, and then that's, that's that note added to, to that account. You can then add uh, the note and the subject into the data grid for an at glance view. So your notes against the account, we can now see the subject and that note in more detail if we wanted to. And um, we can also see notes, all the notes in the platform in a central data grid. So um, if we click, as we just saw, the notes on the left-hand side in that in the blue menu bar, when we click that, it's gonna show every single note in the platform, whether that's against a delegate, whether it's a account, a course, they're all gonna be here. And then you can apply your filters um, to see everything against a certain account or everything against a certain delegate, all in one place, nice and organized. So. Moving on nicely. Course notes are a bit different because you've got the option to share course notes with the trainer. So um, the, the notes are directly mapped to a course. Uh, they're going to be able to provide you a subject, which is going to help you search in the future. So let's type again for future reporting. And then you can finally choose, as I mentioned, if you'd like to share this information with a trainer. So let's have a look how this works. So first of all, we're going to navigate to our web uh, our web courses data grid. We're going to right click an in-house uh, management course, and we're going to go to our notes and add a note. So see here, you can see it's mapped straight to that course already that we've already selected. We can type in our subject. So that's going to be, uh, in this case, company specific scenarios. And in that type, we've got the different examples. We've got a quick note. We've also got the course date information. And we finally got the delegate booking message. So then the note, so we've picked delegate booking message. And then the note, we've uh, got a note from one of the uh, delegates. So we want to pop that in here. And then we're also, when we've popped our note in, we've made it all nice and organized. If we scroll down, we've got this extra option at the bottom here for trainer can access this note. If we click that, that's then going to now show um, in a trainer how that the, the trainer can now see that note. So now we've gone to what a trainer can see. This is the trainer uh, access view. If we right click on that same course and go to notes, you can now see that that note that we've just added is right here for the trainer to see. So that's the difference with the um, notes in courses is that you can open those up to your trainers. If you don't want them to see that, that's absolutely fine. You just don't click the button. But this is going to be a way to communicate with your trainers. Um, without having to send another email, if they go into the platform anyway, they look against that course, they can already see that the note's there, uh, ready and waiting for them with the information that they need for that course, specifically about that delegate. So it's a really nice thing about the notes, being able to share that with trainers. It's really, really helpful. Perfect. So, notes, um, we need to make sure that they work with your processes. And by doing that, we can use uh, custom fields against notes. So we, you can see here, there's a couple already on here. So for example, escalation flag. Um, a few examples that we've got is that checkbox, for example. So using the escalation flag, this can be used by a leadership team, for example, to identify if their involvement is needed. We can add a drop-down box in to see which department is involved with this info. Um, this is gonna be, a, this could be really helpful if you wanna filter those notes on that central notes data grid. You can filter on the notes that are only relevant then to your team. So in this case, training team. And then the final one we've got is another drop-down box where we can set whether the note is still active or if it's closed. It's a good way to just keep uh, an eye on any issues that are still open or if they're closed um, or if they're needed at all. So 
So the final topic of today, um, we're going to be talking about data grids. So uh, we're going to bring your data together into one organized view. Dashboards are often very overlooked um, as a reporting tool. They're a very powerful way to streamline your data, um, tracking your data, and staying on top of those key metrics that you've got within your organization. By centralizing all important insights, dashboards give you instant visibility of the information that matters most, including things like team performance, course progress, or just stats within your platform. So let's have a look at how dashboards can keep you more organized and just that one extra step ahead. So um, we can report on many different things within a dashboard. Some examples here, such as what courses you've got running this week. Um, it could be what resource requirements are unallocated, where you still need to allocate those for the courses to be run. Any places placeholders that are, have been unallocated and anywhere where we're missing some of those delegate details. So um, if you'd like any help with building any these gadgets I'm going to go through um, or disparate areas, please let our support team know. They'll be happy to guide you through how to get these all set up. So we'll have a run through now. So as I mentioned, we've got courses running in the next week in the top left. This is a data grid view. So this is a data grid view on the dashboard is exactly the same as what you'd see in say, um, you know, your user's data grid, your account's data grid, um, pulls exactly the same. It's just pre-filtering that information already. So here um, we would pre, we can show here the start date of the course, the, the details of the course, what template it is, whatever you want to see on your data grid. And then we're just going to filter it. So in effect, the start date is going to be next week or within the next seven days, for example. The one on the top right here, the course is running per month. This is a summary. So here you can see how um, the summary gadget is in effect going to do some sort of maths. So it's going to, whether that's count, sum, average, you've got different options. And in this case, we are in effect grouping on the month and then we're counting how many courses we've run in that month. So it's a good way to be able to keep track of what sort, how many you're doing within a month um, and what sort of courses you're running, how many you've got quieter months, what's busy, where's not busy and how you can really help you with your scheduling. And then the two, the green, the teal color and the purple color, these are statistics. These are just numbers. And again, it's going to do some sort of maths, whether that's going to be counting, summing, averaging, and it's going to give you a number. Um, there's no necessarily data that goes with it. And um, this is just a number on its own. Um, as you can see here, when on to, we will go through this in a second. Underneath, we've then gone into that data a bit more. But these numbers, again, you just put those filters on um, based on what you need. So unallocated resources, you can see here we've got four. And on the right hand side, we've got 15 unallocated placeholder places. Some other really popular uses for this is how many courses we've run this month, how many we've run this year, their income, so many different options with these just to give you that high overview number without having to really dig into the detail. It's just going to give you that overview, which is really nice. Then, as I say, we scroll down a little bit. So we've got our unallocated resources and our placeholder places as statistics. Underneath then, we you can see we've got then more information about them within those data grid gadgets again. So then we've broken down that four into a data grid to give you really that granular information to then be able to actually manage manage those um, those things, those courses, those placeholder places, whatever it may be. And then again, finally scrolling down, we've got the final one, which is a really helpful one, is missing delegate details. So if you know that you need um, mobile numbers um, or certain things about a delegate every time, you can filter it here to show what's missing. So you can see here, these are all our delegates without a missing mobile number. It really helps us to be able to target them, make sure all your records are up to date and you've got all that information you need for your customers. So again, this will just be using a um, a data grid gadget, which we can set help you set up if you need to. Um, and you can pull through again, whatever columns, headers you need on here. So for example, if pre-course survey submitted was not useful for you, you can remove that. It's very, uh, very configurable to what you want it to be and make sure you're getting the right information. So, um, we also have finance dashboards. These are also very popular for finance teams, especially um, things like overdue invoices. Everyone wants to know what overdue invoices they've got and who they need to chase. Also upcoming invoices and due dates. So again, it's that stand out one step ahead, seeing what is coming up. And then recent payments, what have we recently taken? So have a look at how that looks. So again, uh, we've got on the left-hand side here on the top left, you can see we've got a, um, a summary gadget and that is gonna tell us the overdue invoices per customer. So here we've got a list of all of our customers We've got outstanding, so this is the sum. So I mentioned before, we've got sum and count, the different uh, math functionalities that we've got within this, this within the summary gadget. You can see this is summary all the outstanding invoices that they've got. And then this is at the end, it's gonna count how many invoices are overdue. So you can see here that Hyatt Tillman, they owe 264 pounds over one invoice. At the top here, we've got uh, Daughtry Bins. They owe 372 pounds, that's over two invoices. Just helping you really manage what you've got overdue. And at the, final, at the bottom here, we can see the total number uh, the total sum. So we've got £2,518 outstanding 
that's over 15 invoices. It really helps finance teams know exactly what um know exactly what what's overdue, what they need to work on. And then finding the top right again, it's looking to the future. What have we got coming up that's due? You can see here, this is going to show you anything that's upcoming. So again, you could do the next week, the next 30 days, next quarter, whatever you choose. And we can see here, we've got two invoices coming up. So it's, do we need to do anything with those? Or just being aware that these invoices are coming up, are they going to move onto that overdue invoice at any point? Again, it's just that visibility, making sure you're one step ahead so you know exactly what's due to come in. If we scroll down on this dashboard a little bit more, you can see here, this is our recent payments and refunds. This is just going to show all your transactions that have taken place. So you can see the invoice reference number, the transaction ID, who's paid, the amount that they've paid, and then the status. Um, so again, you can choose the columns that are most important to you. If transaction ID is not important to you, we don't have to include that. Uh, again, this is just giving you that overview of this is what we've taken recently and gives you that information should you need it to do some reconciliation or let someone know that your payments have been made or one of those overdue invoices then moves on to this recent payments, you can then see, okay, perfect. They've now made payment. Brilliant. They're off our overdue list. Just gives you that uh, overview without having to go rooting around in the platform. It's just all in one view on your dashboard. Makes it so much easier to look at. So that is dashboards. Um, we're looking now at, that's the final dashboard, sorry. We're now going to look at reporting on team activity within dashboards. So this could be things as upcoming tasks, uh, recent notes, what courses have been created today or what courses have been updated today. Just a disclaimer, this is not intended to be Big Brother um, or keeping a track of what everyone's doing. It's more just giving you um, a way of staying up to date with activity that's happening in the platform um, and what's going on. What courses have we been creating? What notes have we been adding? Um, what tasks are there that still are in the platform? It's just giving you that overview. So this is one that we could use for our team activity. So we've kind of done these in three columns. So you can see we've got overdue tasks, tasks during the next seven days, and what notes have been logged in the last seven days. These are all using our statistic gadgets again. Just a note with the, with the statistic gadgets, you can choose the colors, you can choose these icons, what you want from a, a preset list, the icons, the colors are from a nice uh, like a color grid. Um, we always suggest pastel colors, it makes it so much easier to see, as opposed to like a really bright yellow that's, when you load it, it's just really harsh on the eyes, it's really difficult to view. So a nice pastel color makes it really nice and easy to see. That's just a nice little tip. Um, so yeah, as I say, it's all in columns here. So overdue tasks, we've got one, so that's gonna tell us how many we've got. Uh, and then underneath, we've got what task that is overdue. Similar thing for uh, the middle column, we've got tasks that are during the next seven days. That statistic at the top is just giving us that's we've got three, and it's listing those out underneath. And then the notes logged in the last seven days. This one's more for information, showing you that you've got two logged in the last seven days, and then you can see below what notes they are. Again, the, the second row, they're all um, data grids. So again, you can choose what columns are and aren't included. Um, choose the filters, choose who you want to show, makes it really easy to see at a glance what you've got. Moving down, then we look at the courses that we created today. So again, we're going to just be showing you, these are all the courses that we've created today. So we, again, just keeping an eye on what we're what we're looking, what are we doing in the platform, what courses are we creating? Um, and then also the final one is the course updated today. So this could be anything from changing the name, changing the status, uh, changing the date. This is just going to show you everything that we've updated today. So again, it's easy to find if you're working constantly on a course uh, using the updated today gadget um, or even this week, for example, as a different time frame. That's just going to be able to help you find the course that you've been working on instead of having to go back to a data grid. You can see it straight from here. And the course, uh, the date details label, that's going to take you straight to that course. So you don't have to then go searching for that course in a data grid. You can click that link, take you straight there, which is nice. So again, just a reminder, if you would like to create any of these dashboard areas or any of these gadgets, Get in touch with the support team if you need any guidance. Um, our help guide pages on these are really good, but um, we have our support team too. Should you need to run through anything, just want anything checking, just let us know. So we've covered quite a lot today. Um, we, we've actually covered uh, de finding default tasks for a course. So that was at the very start. Those tasks that are going to happen every single course, how we set those up. Generating tasks based on a certain criteria. Capturing important insights with notes and organizing your data within dashboards. So that's kind of everything we've covered today. Um, the Q&A box is open. So uh, do you have any questions for us? Please pop them in there. Uh, whilst they come in, we've got a couple of common questions that we do get asked, which we'll go through now. So can you build dashboard areas for team members? Uh, it's a super admin function only. Yes, but you can set these up under the profile option uh, in the administration menu and then under dashboards. You can assign them to individuals, to teams, to job roles. There's lots of different functionality of being able to assign those dashboards to different people. Another one we get asked a lot is, can we add custom fields to tasks? The answer is yes. So again, if you want something really specific for your business that we don't already do, you can add that custom field in yourself. Um, the next one is, is quite important. is how can we tell if a task was generated from a workflow 
or if it was manually created. So there isn't a way actually at the minute to tell if this is something that we, there's no way to be able to tell this. Um, if this is something you're interested in, let us know um, and submit a product suggestion so we can see what interest we've got in that. Um, but that's a question that we have been asked before. Um, and then the last one that we've got is, is there a way for um, being able to bulk edit tasks at once? So for example, if a course is canceled and the tasks aren't needed anymore, um, yes, you can bulk edit them and they can be done from the courses tasks list or you can use the task data grid. So like that notes data grid that we went through earlier, there is a tasks one. And that's going to show you all the tasks in the platform. I don't think we've got any questions coming in. So uh, we're just going to go through um, our upcoming events. Um, so we've got one more event for the uh, for 2024. Um, it, this is going to be with Jenna and Frank. And this is going to be on must-have data grid filters. Um, our 2025 webinars are almost ready to be announced. Um, so we'll be releasing those soon, ready for you to sign up. Uh, what we can share with you about 2025 is that the, we've announced our first three sessions for our customer event connect. Um, that's running again next year on the 12th and 13th of March. And we're focusing a lot more next year on platform knowledge sessions. So um, we have uh, three sessions already announced. We've got Stu taking us um, through breast, breast, best, sorry, best practice for working with trainers within your platform. So I'll be looking at the My Teaching area. Jamie's going to be running a session on branding email templates. So making them more uh, brand aware, more like your brand, uh, creating impressive and customer friendly emails. And Hannah's going to be running a session on the navigation of the platform. So it's all about how we get around the platform quickly using things like breadcrumbs, where can you right click, um, just making those clicks less, making you be able to get around your platform much easier. So um, we'd love to see you all there. It's a one and a half day event. Um, it's going to be full of Access Planet and training industry content. Uh, it's going to be based in our office in Lancaster. Uh, and it's just, be, it's just 20 pounds. So it's 20 pound per person to attend. And um, that's for both days. Uh, you can book via our website. Or if you have any questions, just get in touch with us on customer success at accessplanet.com. Um, and one of the team will be able to help you with any questions you've got or direct you where to go to get uh, those bookings made. So that is our session covered for today. As always, if you've got any questions, please do drop us an email or use our support team to ask anything you uh, may have. Uh, but thank you very much for joining us and taking the time to join the session. Hope you found something useful. Um, as mentioned, if you've got any support, if you need any support with building dashboards, anything around those notes or tasks, um, get in touch with us on the support desk by the support portal or give us a call. One of the team will be able to help you. Um, and yeah, we look forward to seeing you on the next one um, in a few weeks time. Have a great day, everyone.